What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, and it's that time of the year, the PvP tier lists. Yes, 2023, the new Arcanist classes came out, and a lot of things have changed since my last PvP tier list. So, if you want to know what classes are absolutely dominating in Cyrodiil as a solo player, then listen up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first class on the chopping block is the Treaded Nightblade. Now, I expected some nerfs, especially to the healing of the class with healthy offering and maybe a little bit of nerf to the damage. But guys, we didn't get any of that. If anything, we got some huge quality of life buffs for the class, as well as just a buff in general to help bolster the damage. Yes, you heard me right, to help bolster the damage of Nightblade. And what I'm talking about is Deathstroke. They actually upped the duration of this debuff from 6 seconds up to 8 seconds. And if you go and check the developer's comments, it said that the Nightblade needed more killing potential, which is uh, kind of absurd to me. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but I don't think the Nightblade needs any help with kill potential. So... When we come to the tier list, again, this is from my solo 1vx perspective. If you don't have friends, this, this is for you. Okay, I don't have friends, so this is definitely for you. So when it comes to Nightblade, the Nightblade really doesn't have a lot of crowd control. The only thing you really have in open world and serial is, is your burst. And it's very single target. It's actually pretty difficult to pull off when you're by yourself. So we're going with the Magic and Nightblade. I'm, I'm probably going to put the Magic and Nightblade in an A tier. It actually does require some mental gymnastics. I know I give you Nightblades a hard time, but it, it, it's not that easy of a class. I get it. So... Magblade, we're definitely gonna put that in the A tier. Now, when it comes to the Stand Blade, I think the Mag Blade is much more prevalent than the Stand Blade. I have not been decimated by Stand Blades in a really long time. And if I do, I mean, a Night Blade's a Night Blade to me. So, for that reason, I'm just gonna put Stand Blade and Mag Blade in the same tier because I can't really differentiate between the two classes all too much. The next class is the Necromancer. Now, the Necromancer got a massive buff. Thank God Zoss gave some love to this class after ripping away our synergy on our Boneyard and our damage. And thank God they nerfed Harmony. Yeah, you know, I'm so glad for this buff, man. You know what they did? Yes, this buff. They just increased your spam, your Flame Skull, the third tick of Flame Skull from 20% to 50%. And that is somehow supposedly supposed to offset the nerf or, or gutting to harmony and also the boneyard synergy um but what magic and necromancer guys is a trash tier class um it, it is it is abysmal it does nothing you have to use arena master weapons a bunch of proc sets to get anything done the bony boy is very inconsistent uh, it dies too easy it's way too hard to burst in this class and you really just you just don't have anything going on you're, you're you're just a big tank and if you're not running a bash build quite frankly you're not having fun on this class so we are putting a macro in the trash tier so it leads us over into the stamina variant i'm actually going to put the stamina variant to the necromancer in the c tier because it is a little bit more survivable it does offer a lot more burst potential than the macro variant you're going to do a D swing spam into a blast bones into a dawn breaker and your dots do, do hit pretty hard and i just think stamina if you're going to play necromancer stamina is definitely the way to go next class is the sorcerer now this is my red-headed stepchild of a class this is why i made at the beginning of vso and quite frankly it hasn't really gotten a lot of buffs here as of late yes they did change the hard word to where it now dynamically scales off the higher of your max and magica or your health but a really good change this patch is actually the dark exchange so you now get the minor berserk and you also get minor force during the 20 second duration you're restoring those resources which is actually much needed the sorcerer did need a little bit of damage i suppose this isn't the worst way to go about it but now if you wasn't using dark exchange or whatever morph it is now a necessity on the class so when it comes to the magic variants getting 1vx clips, I think the mag sorg is just kind of squishy. Your resource sustain is kind of wonky and you're kind of reliant on stacking max health or maximum magicka in order to have increased survivability because now your hardened ward stacks dynamically. It already did before. I just wanted to reiterate that off either your highest health stat or your highest magicka stat. And to be frank, stacking into either of those attributes is just a huge waste of damage. You would much rather be specking into high spell damage if you can. So unfortunately, that's not how that class operates, which leads into a lot of sets you're kind of forced to run on the class, which is uh, kind of feels bad, man. So for that reason, I'm probably going to put the Magboy in C tier still yet. Yes, these buffs are nice, but quite frankly, guys, this class really doesn't do much outside of dueling when it comes to 1vx. It's, it's just difficult. Your survivability is not that good. 
So let's talk about the Stam Sword. Now, the Stam Sword, if you are good at it, you're really good at it, right? The Stam Sword can put out hellacious damage. And then again, like the Mag Sword, you now getting minor force and minor berserk is just going to help bolster the damage on this class. I honestly think it, if you are really good at the Stam Sword, it is honestly an A tier class for 1VXing. If you're kind of mid or average you know, player, the class does function relatively differently. Like there's a very high skilling for the Stam Sword. So for that reason, I'm going to put an A tier. If you're good at the class, now if you're just looking for a class to hop into PvP with and you're going to try to run a Stam Sword, you will feel like a B and C tier class. But once you really hone the class and really understand its limitations, it really pops off. So for that reason, I'm putting an A tier. Next is the Dreaded Dragonite. As you guys may have guessed, not a lot has changed for this class. We did get some nerfs on the class. They did kind of change Dark Talons and Burning Talons a little bit. And they also changed one of the passives. Not the Battle War passive, thank God. But they, they changed the Elder Dragon passive to uh, further limit your reach on your melee attacks. Which I've actually felt that in Cyrodiil as of late. Um, that, that, that 2 meter difference has made me lose some 1vx's and some clips on occasion so and, and they, they changed the passive to where it gives you health recovery which is a completely wasted stat in pvp so i mean it is what it is essentially they just remove one of our passives but mag dk is still king of the crop this is the most devastating class that has ever existed in eso for the past couple of years um you can run literally anything on this class and it's going to perform well I'm actually going to do a stream where I run nothing but white gear, white crafted gear on the Dragonite, and it's still going to slap. So if you want to be around for that, please hit the like and sub button. And same thing goes for the Stamina Variant. The Stamina Variant, I can't tell the difference between the Magicka Variant because you pretty much use the exact same sets, the playstyle is exactly the same, and you're going to die by the exact same abilities. And the good thing about the Dragonite compared to the Stam Sword, you don't have to be good at it. You can just run the class, you can be mid, you can be average, you go hop in Serial, and you're going to have amazing results, always. Next class is the Templar. Now the Templar did get a lot of love after getting substantial nerfs. It did get a lot of love this patch and I honestly feel like the Templar is, is in a really good spot. The class did get major protection on the build when you use your gap closer. You can use the morph that gives you one major protection for four seconds or you can use the morph explosive charge which is going to give you major protection for 10 seconds which is absolutely incredible in my opinion. And then another buff that you're going to get when you stand in your runes effectively you're going to get a lot more healing from it. So this class just got a lot more tankier. Now the damage didn't necessarily go up but your tank ability and survivability definitely did. And because the Templar is more tanky in general that means you can push a little bit more damage on the class so when it comes to the magplar i'm gonna put the magplar in a tier just because it does everything man like it it literally it does a lot of damage a lot of healing a lot of survivability a lot of pressure especially from a 1vx standpoint this class literally does everything um the only thing it does kind of lack um i would say is a, a huge burst because it, it, it does require a lot of work to kind of land up in your burst and you can't land it on multiple people like the dragonite so it does require a little bit of finessing to get the class to function and kind of same thing for the stamplar man I, I i really don't see the difference between them this patch i know on my last tier list I got flamed for putting Stamplar down in the B tier, and to be honest guys, I'm going to stick to my guns on this one. I have not seen a really good Stamplar, and for that reason, I don't have a lot of information to go off of guys. I, I really don't on this one. I can only listen to what the community says, and the community says this is probably an A tier class, but again, I'm going to stick to my guns on this one. I'm going to put it down in B tier. You guys are going to have to prove me wrong. Light me up in the comments again. I love the engagement. The algorithm loves it. So the next class is the Warden. Now this is one of the most fun classes to play, even though I don't play it on stream a lot, but it is a very, very strong, powerful class. But it did get a nerf. And not just a little nerf, this is a big deal for PvP. So they did change Arctic Blast, so this is the morph of Arctic Wind. So instead of getting that Insta CC from activating Arctic Blast, it's now on a two second delay. So yes, in some scenarios, it is nice to have a delayed CC so you can time more appropriate bursts around it. But again, if it's a delayed CC, there's more counterplay from your opponent. And no, your opponent's not gonna be able to count the two seconds. They're not gonna know. They're just gonna get randomly stunned. But not having an instant CC when you need it most is a huge detriment. So when it comes to ranking, I'm definitely going to put the Magden in A tier. And the reason I'm putting this class in A tier is because it has a lot of utility. It has a lot of ongoing pressure. It has a lot of AoE control and CC. It is still a phenomenal class. And the damage on the class is very, very deceptive at times. 
So when it comes to the Stamden, it is a little bit different play style than the Magden, but I think potentially the Stamden does have a little bit better 1VX potential than the Magden. The reason I'm saying this is because it does have huge AoE burst potential, whereas the Magden has a little bit of burst potential and it has mostly consistent pressure. The Stamden, if you line up a Beatles combo with something like Plague Break or Spin to Win or Execution, whatever, man, like line a Dawnbreaker up into your Beatles, it's going to do hellacious damage. Stuns, Clever Alchemist, whatever, man. You're going to be able to wipe groups of people pretty easy. But the thing about the Samden is you, you are kind of reliant on your ultimate and your combo. Without that combo, you really can't whittle anyone down, whereas the Magden can. So when it comes to the last class on the chopping block, the Arcanus, the Arcanus or Arcanus, however you want to say it, is one of the most fun classes in the Elder Scrolls Online. It is about time we got a new class. With that being said, the 1VX potential of this class is absolute dog water. It is really fun though. It is really, really fun. You can build it a lot of different ways. You can do a heavy attack bombing build. You can do just a normal bombing build. You can do an old school blazing shield Templar build where you stack maximum health and you just marinate everyone in your abyssal shield. It is a lot of fun to play. But in 1VX scenarios, it, it just lacks a lot of damage. It, it, the utility is great, right? The healing is great. The survivability is great. It is a nice, easy class to pick up and do you know, okay with. You're definitely going to survive. But its kill potential is abysmal. The reason its kill potential is abysmal is because the only hard hitting ability in your entire kit just simply doesn't work. So if you try to use Fake Carver, it is an ability that's supposed to tick three times every 0.9 seconds and you cannot get this to land in Cyrodiil. Okay, I have many clips on the channel showing like how terrible the tracking is, how terrible the hit registry is, how terrible the servers are. You literally have to lead your shots a full second and a half in front of your opponent in order to get your beam to hit. And due to that inconsistency, there is just no burst on the class. You have to build a very, very niche high health build or a bombing build, or you have to rely on a bunch of proc sets like Masters, Fate Shram, Marsless to get the job done. And for that reason, for the Magic and the Stamina variant of this class, it doesn't matter which one you roll because your skills, most of them anyway, scale dynamically off your highest resource pool. It, in a 1vx scenario man they, they're, they're trash here they're down there with the the mag crow and man this, this class needs a lot of love um it again it was really fun to play and you guys may have some success on it it actually does do pretty well in duels so when it comes to solo play the class just simply falls short now there will be this honeymoon phase for you guys on console when you're going to think this class is absolutely amazing it just shreds it rips all the time the class is very very easy to play around and once people hear in about a week or so catch on to how to actually play against the arcanist you're going to realize very quickly yeah this class sucks Thanks for watching until the end, guys. I would really appreciate if you could go follow me on kick.com as well as Twitch. I do stream on all three platforms and it would mean the absolute world to me. Speaking of meaning the absolute world to me, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. You guys are absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every single one of you. So with all that being said, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and sub and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.